And we welcome you to Westminster Blue Jays football on the Blue Jays Broadcasting Network. I'm Mickey Doolittle. I'll be taking you the rest of the way throughout the year. And welcome to Senior Day slash Military Appreciation Day. We'll be having ceremonies here at Miller Stadium all throughout the day. So be sure to stick with us all throughout this one. It's going to be a fun one here in mid-Missouri. So it's going to be Minnesota Morris and the Westminster Blue Jays doing battle here. They met last week in what was a conference game, a UMAC conference game, but this week actually, because of a whole host of circumstances, it does not count towards the conference record. So, bit of interesting circumstances, conference opponents facing each other in a non-conference game. It's gonna be one in five against three and three today. Conference title very much in the cards for Minnesota Morris. This is a very good football team that's powered by their offense, and they were powered last week by both sides of the ball in all three phases against this Westminster team. A 45 to nothing blowout of Westminster. They really wore down a Westminster roster that's been a little bit thinner as of late. Minnesota Morris, their offense, we mentioned it earlier, they like to run the football. It's mostly Blake Johnson and Isaiah Boss, the two hard-hitting running backs. Johnson more of the power back that likes to run it up the middle between the tackles, and then Boss is a 5'8 speedster that will beat you to the edge. He is a really, really good running back, and you're going to want to watch him here today. In addition to that, this is an offense that likes to spread the ball around. Nine different receivers caught a pass last week in that game, so very much an entertaining offense that will get everybody involved. The Minnesota Morris defense is anchored by senior quarterback Garrett Ellison. He was all-conference returner in addition to all-conference corner. He is a ball hawk. He's fun to watch. And on the flip side, Westminster College coming off that 45 to nothing loss, you felt like they were starting to put things together offensively a couple of weeks ago in their win against Martin Luther. Well, last week it was a bit of a struggle. They got beat out of the gate, and that's going to be key today. Don't get behind in this game. Brandon Perry is going to be back at starting quarterback today. There was a little bit of unknown uncertainty around that quarterback position this week, but it will be Perry starting today. And getting that run game going with Jordan Kern in this great running back room is so important, especially against a great opponent like Minnesota Morris. If you can keep their offense off the field, that is going to be huge. And then on the flip side of this Westminster team, their defense, of course, Dawson Brandt. Can't say enough good things about him at middle linebacker, the former UMAC all-conference linebacker. He's going to be back out in action today. Be sure to watch that middle linebacker position. Great sideline to sideline speed. And then this defensive front getting some pressure in on Minnesota Morris. That's going to be a key as well. So it's Minnesota Morris and it is Westminster. And it comes next on the Westminster Blue Jays broadcast network. Of 
Minnesota Motors. Our military honorees will be receiving the American Warrior Achievement Medal. Ladies and gentlemen, the United States Exercise Tiger Foundation and Westminster College thank these men for their service to our country. A booth has been set up at the north end of the field where the USTF will be presenting service medals to all past and present military personnel in attendance today. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we ask you to please rise and ask everybody to please remove your hats as we honor America with the singing of our national anthem. Today's national anthem is being sung by Garrett Berger, DJ Bledsoe, and DJ Snyder. We would like to thank the Kingdom Pilots Association for today's flyover. The pilots were in a mission man formation in memory of the six Westminster students who died during the Vietnam War. The pilots for today were Carl Jantz flying a Cessna 172, A.J. Stricker flying a World War II air coupe, and Andrew Doppel flying a Cherokee Piper 140. Give a round of applause to all our military personnel.
The one in five Westminster Blue Jays look to get back on track and take on a very tough conference opponent in Minnesota Morris. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to Westminster Blue Jay football. My name is Mickey Doolittle. I'll be taking you through the action today. We are just about set for kickoff. Minnesota Morris won the toss and deferred to the second half, and Westminster will receive the opening kickoff moving from right to left. You're on a beautiful day in Fulton, Missouri. Having it teed up is Alex Happ. And we are just about set for football. He trots up to the football, blasts it off, and it is caught by the Westminster returner at the 10-yard line along the far sideline, tries to make a man miss, still on his feet, fighting through tacklers across the 20, and is swarmed and brought down at the 22-yard line. So that is where the Blue Jays will set up. McFarland, the returner there. And out back to work is Brandon Perry, the quarterback for Westminster. We've seen him start the, the season at receiver and move to the quarterback spot mid-season. And he has been pretty good throughout it. This offense moved the ball well against Martin Luther two weeks ago, but last week shut out 45 to nothing loss. He'll start in the shotgun with a three-by-one formation with trips to the far left. He gives up the middle to Hessel, who is swarmed and brought down. Excuse me, Jordan Kern on the, ta on the carry up the middle, and he only got one yard, if that, back to the 21-yard line. Ball spotted still on the far hash. Military Appreciation Day here for Westminster. A gigantic American flag flying along the south end zone as... The Blue Jays will come out in another shotgun formation. Same formation with Kern to Perry's right. Three by one, trips to the near side. He takes the snap. He looks. He pump fakes. He's going to run up the middle across the 25. Slides down at the 25 after being hit down. And a modest four-yard gain sets up third down and six. Perry known for his running ability. A fast, athletic guy that struggled a bit throwing the football but really what opens this offense up with him in the game is his legs as they will break the huddle ball spotted just inside the right hash Perry in the shotgun again heavier set along the line of scrimmage couple of tight ends in the game Claps his hands, takes the snap, drops back, immediately pressured, rolls out to his left, trying to hit the sideline. He's swarmed and will go out of bounds at the 24-yard line, it looks like. A loss of one. He did get back to the line of scrimmage. Nonetheless, it's fourth down and medium, and Westminster will trot on the punting unit. So an unsuccessful three and out first drive for Perry in this offense, and now Dawson Brandt, the middle linebacker, usually, that's his day job, is on to punt. And a pair of returners back for Minnesota Morris, Garrett Ellison being one of them. He was an all UMAC punt returner and kick returner. The kick is away, it's fielded. A diving catch to field it is Jacob Miranda at the 49 yard line. And Minnesota Morris will start in Westminster territory. And here comes this offense led by Marcus Reeb. The senior out of Toronto, Ontario, 6'1", 200 pounds, second team all UMAC in 2022 and 21. He's in the shotgun, two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. The running back is Johnson standing to his right. He takes the snap, play fake, throws a slant over the middle, and it's overthrown, almost intercepted. Westminster nearly got the ball back immediately. Eric Stevenson had it skip into him and incomplete on the play. So a almost disastrous first play for the Cougars. As Reeb a little bit off on that throw. Sam Jordan, the wide receiver to the near side. In the shotgun once again is Reeb. He gives up the middle, fighting for yardage is Isaiah Boss, the running back, up the middle. And he is immediately hit and stuffed. And amongst the tacklers was Devin Miller, the defensive end, who's 
Looked really good this year. The junior at 6'3", 275. Transfer from Missouri Valley College. And it's third and 10 for Minnesota Morris. They have that those two running backs that are so good. But here on third and 10, they'll come out in the shotgun with four wide receivers. He drops back. He looks. He's swarmed. He throws it underneath, and it's incomplete. He was looking for his receiver, Dylan Naughton, and he was immediately hit. He was running a curl route along the far hash and just couldn't hang on to it. I don't think he would have gotten the first down either way. He was at the 39-yard line with the line to gain. Excuse me, he was at the 41-yard line with the line to gain being the 39. So here comes the punting unit for Minnesota Morris. And back to return is Mikel Far McFarland. Punt is away. Plenty of time. He boots it from his 40. A high end over end kick that's botched, and they'll jump on it. McFarland had it go through his hands, but it was immediately jumped on. So the Westminster offense will come back out. 12.05 remaining in the opening quarter. First and 10, they'll start from their own 10-yard line. Sam Owen was the one who fell on it. And these two offenses... Both starting three and out. The Westminster defense has been the strength of this team all throughout this year, but they have their hands full with the Cougars' offense today. Perry starts in the shotgun, claps his hands, takes the snap, gives outside. No, he keeps it himself trying to get to the sideline. He doesn't, I don't think he got back to the 10-yard line. Maybe a loss of one on the play, a read option that just went to the far side. So... It was a loss of one. Second down and 11 coming up for the Blue Jays. Ball spotted on the nine yard line. Now they gotta think about possibly trying to give their punting unit a little bit of room. Takes the snap, drops back. He's gonna throw, he throws outside and it goes through the hands of Westerfield who's running a out route, only a two or three yard out route. I'm not sure how much that would have done for them, but it falls incomplete and it's third down and 11. And Westminster has really struggled on third down this year. They rank last in the UMAC at 27% hit rate, but they've gone a lot for it on fourth down. They're 12 of 18 on fourth down conversions and a lot of that has to do with the game against Martin Luther a couple of weeks ago. Dante Billups, the back now, checks into the game. Brandon Perry, still the quarterback, drops back, play fake, rolls out to his left. He's got a ton of room. Cross the 15, cross the 20, pump fakes again, and he gets up to the 25-yard line and out of bounds. The first first down of the game is a scramble by Brandon Perry. And that is exactly what they needed, if nothing else, just to give their punting unit a little bit of room, but perhaps that can spark the offense. Trey King now into the game at wide receiver. Peyton Olsen also a receiver in the game. Perry starts in a split pistol formation with Kern, the running back behind him. Excuse me, that's Billups. He runs up the middle and is immediately tackled at the 26-yard line. Dante Billups back comes into the game at 67 carries for 324 yards. It's good for nearly five yards a carry, two touchdowns and one fumble. Fumbling was a bit of an issue earlier in the year, but it seems that the Blue Jays have fixed a little bit of that. Now Trace Hessel, the running back, checks into the game. Another split pistol formation. Perry claps his hands, takes the snap, gives up the middle to Hessel, bounces it outside of the 30, trying to get to the sideline, tripped up from behind, nearly at the first down line to gain at the 34-yard line, but he's going to be a yard short. It's third and one. And those are the runs that Westminster's offense really thrives behind. It's a part of today's ceremonies. It's also senior day, and Trace Hessel is one of the honorees of that. Another split pistol formation. Campbell lined up to the near side. It's a give up the middle, and I don't think he got it. He's immediately hit by nearly the entire defensive line of Minnesota Morris. Westminster wants and are signaling for a first down, but I don't know if he even got back to the line of scrimmage. 
maybe a loss of a couple of inches. It remains fourth and one, and I believe they're going to keep out this offense. Head coach John Welty willing to roll the dice again. They've been one of the best teams. They have been the best team statistically in the UMAC this year on fourth down. Perry claps his hands, takes a snap. Hessel up the middle, a dive run, and he got nowhere. He may have lost a yard. And the Blue Jays turn it over on downs after such a promising drive after the Perry run, and they give it back to the Cougars in their own territory. And that will bring out Marcus Reeb and this offense once again. So back out to work. The second-ranking offense in terms of points in the UMAC. Two wide receivers to the right, one to the left. It's a play fake. He throws over the middle, and it's tipped away by Brant. Oh, Brant had it fluttering in the air after he got a big paw on it and it nearly was able to intercept it, but a good deflection, and oh, boy, Carter Watness was running all alone up the seam, and if it weren't for Dawson Brandt, that might have been a touchdown for the Cougars. But nonetheless, it's second down and 10 from the 34-yard line of Westminster. Reworking from the shotgun with Isaiah Boss to his right. The give is up the middle to Boss, who bounces off a tackler, escapes, was impressive to even get a yard out of that. He got up to the 33-yard line, and that brings up third down and long. For the second time today, it's third and long for the Cougars, and Westminster looks to try and stop them. Ball spotted at the near side hash, the 33-yard line of Westminster. Twin...
entire defensive line contributed to that stop. And it's fourth down and two. Big play here early. Checking back into the game is Boss. Johnson checks out after the negative one yard rush. Dylan Naughton walks slowly onto the field and it looks like a little bit of confusion from the Cougars. But instead they will let the quarter tick down. Still no score. Westminster looking for yet another stop defensively when we come back right here on the Westminster Blue Jays Network. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you Fourth down and two to go. Big play to start the second quarter for Minnesota Morris. Still in a scoreless tie between the Blue Jays and the Cougars. After the impressive run by Isaiah Boss on second and ten that set up third and one, Westminster was able to stuff Blake Johnson, the other running back, behind the line of scrimmage and push them backwards. Fourth and two now. It's been a game where... The Blue Jays' defense has come to play so far for the quarter. Just hopefully they can get off the field and this offense can maybe stay on the field for an extended amount of time and give them some rest. But the task at hand is fourth and two. Reeb in the shotgun. Westminster showing blitz. It is a blitz. Give up the middle to Boss who bounces off a tackle, fights through it across the 30, gets the first down to the 29-yard line of the Blue Jays. And that is a demoralizing play for Westminster. But it's kind of only a matter of time because this defense has been out there for a while. And that defense has been impressive this year. The third ranked defense in the UMAC. First and 10 for the Cougars. The Flip. It's an end around flip on the outside. Miranda getting to the sideline, cuts it back across the 20, 15, and is finally shoved out of bounds by Brandt at the 13 yard line. About a misdirection. It, all the action looked like it was going to Boss to the far side, but they instead flip the ball back across the formation to Miranda. And now an apparent injury timeout. Referees talking to. Connor Vaughn, but I don't think he's the one injured. And we'll take a quick break right here on the Westminster Blue Jays Network. Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions. You just cut it short. Welcome back to Westminster football. Christian Diedrich, the left tackle and captain of this team, was the one who got up a little bit shaky. But now, hard line is Boss, who gets the inside tackle. Carry, bounces it outside. Five, stiff arm, touchdown. Cougars. Isaiah Boss, it was only a matter of time before he got going. And on the one of the first plays of the, third, the second quarter, he's able to get the Cougars in the end zone. So now on to attempt the extra point is Minnesota Morris. It's Cortez Ramirez, also the punter. He's out of a right-handed kick, good snap, good hold, kick on the way, and it just sneaks inside the left upright. So with 4.05 remaining, Minnesota Morris, Gets on the board here from Fulton. 
and they will give it back to Westminster after this on the Westminster Blue Jays broadcast network. To join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. And we welcome you back. 14.05 remains in the second quarter. McFarland and Teal back to return for the Blue Jays. And it is still. This offense looks to answer. And back out to work is Perry. Trying to maybe give his defense, if nothing else, an extended break. Perry works under center. The give up the middle, excuse me, that's not Perry. And a fumble on an exchange snap, a bad exchange. It was Peyton Byerly in at quarterback for the Blue Jays and the fumble hits the ground and Minnesota Morris has recovered it. It was a bad exchange as Byerly couldn't get it to the runner on the play and the ball just came out at the 26 yard line and Minnesota Morris able to recover. So 13.54 remaining and that is a big one because this defense comes out after a long extended drive Back out to work is Reeb. 26 yard line, far side hash. Reeb stands at his own 30 in a shotgun formation. The flip outside is to Blake Johnson who hits the sideline hard, cuts it up field, gets pushed out at the 19. A flag is down, sitting back at the 24 yard line. We'll check on that, but a good first down play for Minnesota Morris who ran that pitch play to the outside. They've Run that a lot, and it looks like it's coming back. Holding against the offense, and it's a 10-yard penalty, so that will erase that run. Johnson hit the outside on that flip play. They, they really like to run that play, especially to the short side of the field. It doesn't allow them a ton of room, but it does allow their blockers a little bit more time to get up the field and know where that action is going, so... First and 20 from the 34-yard line. Play fake, throws over the middle. One-handed catch by the tight end, Mitchell, streaking across the middle of the field inside the 15 and is tackled down at the 14-yard line. Cole Mitchell running a crossing route, able to stick a big paw out there, stab it, and bring it into his chest for a big first down. First and 20 conversion for the Cougars. And now they're just really taking their time, huddling up, not quick to the line. Three by one formation, the lone receiver to the right is Ethan Tang. It's that toss play again, Johnson hits the outside inside the 10 and gets knocked out of bounds around the 10 yard line, excuse me, at the 11. It's toss play they really do like running it they'll run it back to back plays if they have to we've seen him do that a lot offensive coordinator Kevin Burke in his fourth year at Minnesota Morris joined as offensive coordinator in 2020 an east coast guy was at Stony Brook in New York the offense he leads comes out in three by one formation with trips to the field side. Give up the middle to Johnson who bounces off the offensive line inside the five and he jumps into the end zone. Touchdown Cougars. Blake Johnson houses the second touchdown of the game for Minnesota Morris and with 12.30 remaining, they'll bring out the PAT unit once again. 
And this run game is so potent. They rank second in the UMAC in rushing yards at 190 per game. Extra point, good snap, good hold. Kick is no good. It missed, missed it to the right. Cortez Ramirez, and that will make it a 13 to nothing game. Westminster's defense has been out there for a long time, guarding against some really tough runners in Johnson and Boss, the two of the better runners in the UMAC. Both of them are former all-conference players, Johnson being back in 2021 when he got second team all-UMAC. Only played in three games last year, but Isaiah Boss filled in very nicely, getting first team all-conference and third team all-region. He rushed for 125 yards last year. And they love to use him in space, trying to get him in space any way possible. Screen passes, little flip plays. They're very creative with how they get him the ball. So he's got it teed up, jogs up to the football, a line drive kick that bounces in front of Teal and McFarland. Teal will field it off the bounds, 20, 25, angles towards the left sideline, across the 30, and is knocked out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Elijah Teal showing off the speed. He really hasn't quite put it all together in a Westminster Blue Jay uniform, but his upside is unbelievable. He is extremely quick, and we've seen him used a little bit more and more throughout the year. He holds the track and field record. So back out to work is Peyton Byerly. He came into the game for Brandon Perry earlier. Three by one formation, trips to the near side. Throw it outside to Hessel, who breaks a tackle on a screen pass, gets across the 40-yard line to the 41. Nicely drawn up play by Elbert Kern, the offensive coordinator. Hessel, Hessel getting outside, getting to that sideline, showing off a bit of power. And Brandon Perry, the quarterback, has been playing at wide receiver. He's split out to the far left, right along the numbers. Byerly in the shotgun. The play fake, he throws it outside to Perry, who catches it at the 42, tries to cut it back inside, bounces off a tackle, and goes backwards and finally flung out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And that'll bring up third down and medium to long. A failed screen pass towards the field side. Perry really never had that much room to run. Byerly, Byerly a much more relatively traditional quarterback who's going to stand in the pocket, but also has a little bit of speed. Comes out on third down and seven. 11 14 remains in the second quarter. Claps his hands, takes the snap, trying to get outside, cuts it upfield, 40, and is popped at the 42. Falls forward to the 43 yard line ish. Good run from Byerly to get some of those yards back, and you have to imagine the Blue Jays could stay out. And slowly the offense will come off the field, and the punting unit trots on. Led by Dawson Brandt. Garrett Ellison back to return for the Cougars. In a, four, in a 13 to nothing game, maybe question the decision a little bit. It's only fourth and two. But nonetheless, Brandt gets the snap, punts a high spiraling kick that's fielded at the 23 yard line and immediately stepping out of bounds is Ellison. So another good punt from Dawson Brandt. He has been a very bright spot in this game for the Blue Jays. 10-23 remains in the second quarter. Immediately running out are the offense and the defense. So back out to work is Marcus Reeb in this offense. Can't quite tell who the running back in the game is right now. He's hidden from my vantage point by Reeb. First and 10. 
The give up the middle is to Boss, who's immediately hit in the backfield and flung backwards for a loss of a couple. And on the play, that was a great stop. Exploding into the backfield was David Dave Fenton. Excuse me, Devin Miller getting into the backfield. Boy, has he been really good this year. Ten and a half tackles for a loss. The junior out of Paris, Missouri. Time winding down below ten minutes in the opening half of this one. Cougars lead 13 to nothing. Reeb in the shotgun. He drops back, straight drop back. Now escapes the pocket to his right. 20, cuts it upfield. He tucks it and runs it. Spins back to the inside across the 25 and is brought down at the 28-yard line. He'll cut the deficit in yards and the yards to gain about in half. And it's third and five or six. It's a big third down for the Blue Jays' defense trying to get off the field and get this offense back out to work. You have to imagine if Westminster wants to stay in this game, they have maybe have to get a spark play from their defense or their special teams. From the shotgun, three by one formation, trips to the near side, out route thrown on the edge to Jordan, who cuts up field across the 30, is knocked out of bounds right at the line to gain, and they're gonna say he's a yard short. The 31 yard line with the 32, the, the line to gain. Reeb is slowly walking towards his sideline and a big decision here and they're gonna pull the offense off the field and they will punt it away. So both coaches going a bit conservative on fourth and short here in the second quarter. They are still relatively far back into Westminster territory. And Cortez Ramirez back on to punt. Teal back to return, standing off to the right. It's a spiraling kick that hits at the 36. Teal returns it off of a bounce, gets across the 30, and is spun backwards. And the forward progress will get him to the 30-yard line, and that's where this offense will go back out to work. Yes, the defense has given up 13 points, but it's been relatively impressive in this game, what they've been able to do after spending so much time on the field. So back out to work is Peyton Byerly in this offense. Billups in the backfield in a split pistol formation. The pitch on the outside is to Billups. He cuts it back up the field, barely gets back to the line of scrimmage before he's swarmed and he falls forward Across the 30 to about the 31. Second down and nine officially. Byerly, the junior out of Springfield, Missouri at 6'1", 200 pounds. Calling the plays now. It was a quarterback change around the flip of the quarter. Byerly on his first play from scrimmage had a bad exchange and fumbled the football leading to Seven Minnesota Morris points, but has been pretty good so far since coming in. He's in the pistol again, takes the snap, throws a bit of a slant route over the middle, and falling forward across the 35-yard line is Brandon Perry. So quarterback hooks up with quarterback to bring up third down and short. Brandon Perry, again, started this game at quarterback, Started the season at receiver. Started the game at quarterback. Now he's back to receiver. Byerly in the pistol once again. One wide receiver left, one to the right with two tight ends on the formation. Sends a man in motion from left to right. It's a play fake. Steps up in the pocket, trying to escape. Gets up the middle, falls forward to the 39, but he's a yard short. Byerly tried to show off the wheels but was just not able to get enough room to bring it out. Now checking into the game is big Jordan Kern. That tells me that Coach Welty is wanting to go for this. Six minutes and 39 seconds remain in the second quarter. And Westminster uses a timeout. 
and we will as well. Westminster football returns after this on the Westminster Blue Jays Network. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career by becoming a Museum Studies major at Westminster College. Fourth down and one for the Blue Jays. It's two running backs in the backfield and an eye formation for Byerly in this offense. Comes out under center. Big loaded up formation. Another fumbled snap. He bounces it outside across the 41 and gets the first down. It looks like he fumbled the snap, picked it up off the ground, and got outside the tackles to pick up a first down. Wow, Byerly out of structure making a really nice play. And that moves the chains for the Blue Jays. So first down and 10, another I formation. Same personnel package, no substitutions for Westminster. Kern is the fullback in the backfield. The give is up the middle and immediately hit and dragged down to the 44 yard line is Dante Billups. So he's brought down in between the hashes. Second down and nine to go. As Trace Helsel checks back into the game. And now he checks out. And Elijah Teal checks in. So rotating door. Maybe they wanted the extra receiver instead of the extra running back. Kern stays in the game. He's lined up to Perry's right. Two receivers left, one to the right. Byerly in the shotgun. Claps his hands, takes the snap, a play fake. They're looking long. He throws over the middle, and it is dropped. Almost intercepted by Emmerich, who was in coverage on, it looks like Ian Bach but was, that route was never open. So third down and nine upcoming. And Byerly back into the huddle calling the shots. So it looks like Brandon Perry is also along the sidelines looking at his play sheet on his wrist. So perhaps both of them contributing to relaying play calls. Both of them have played quarterback in this situation and timeout. So it looks like everything was all out of whack on that. So Westminster uses their second timeout within the span of a couple of minutes. And with that, we will send it to a quick break right here on the Westminster Blue Jays Network. Third and nine for Byerly in this offense. Byerly into a passing situation at their own 44-yard line. Claps his hands, takes the snap, immediately rolls out to the left, cuts it upfield, looking to run. 45, cuts it back inside across the 50. 40 and is cut down deep into Cougar territory at the 40-yard line. Peyton Byerly, wow, getting out of the pocket and getting upfield. He takes a big hit at the 40 yard line, but 
paid the price for a big run in Westminster with first and 10 into Minnesota Morris territory. I formation for this offense with Helsel the running back. Byerly getting the call from the sideline. Outlaw lined up as the fullback. The give, no, nope, it's a play fake. He rolls out to his left, immediately pressured, looking deep downfield to the left goal line pylon. He jumps up and he nearly made the catch, but he can't make it. It falls to the ground. Aiden Campbell nearly came down with a big, big catch, but couldn't come down with it. Byerly put it in a good spot in a one-on-one -on -one jump ball situation. Campbell at 5'11", but really got up there to try and moss his defender. Second down and 10 for the Blue Jays. I formation again. Henderson was in coverage there. They give up the middle to Helsel. He rams his way forward for about a gain of one before he's brought down. So Caden McNam McNabb, the linebacker, 22 tackles on the year, one and a half tackles for a loss, made that tackle. And it's third down and nine. Big, lots of substitutions for this Blue Jays team as they take a tight end out of the game and a fullback out of the game and bring in two extra receivers. So a shotgun formation, four wide receivers on the field. Kern in the backfield with Byerly. Claps his hands, excuse me, that's Billups. Play fake, throws it on a curl route. It's caught, 35, 20, excuse me, to the 25 yard line and falls forward for a first down. Trey King on the catch, running a curl route along the left side numbers, cut it upfield and got a couple extra. Time ticking down, below 315 left in the half. 13 to nothing our score and Westminster really taking their time on this drive. Trying to hold on to the ball, not give the Cougars any extra time to try and get their offense back out on the field. Good disciplined throw from Peyton Byerly. Who's able to stand in that pocket and deliver a strike to King. Who makes his sixth reception of the year. Still four receivers on the field, two by two. Play fake to Billups, drops back into a five-step drop, throws a dangerous pass that's broken up. Trey King became a bit of a defender there. And Alex Emmerich nearly had another, nearly had a, an interception after dropping one earlier. So second and 10, Byerly with his second probably turnover worthy throw. But there has been some good that com has come with the bad. Riley really taking his time up to the line of scrimmage. The clock is stopped. 12 seconds to get a playoff. From the shotgun, Phillips the running back in the backfield to Byerly's right. It's a designed rollout to the right. Pump fakes, cuts it upfield, 25-20. Bounces it outside, past the 20, and gets... About half of the yardage to gain, he gets to the 18, and that'll bring up third down and short to medium. Robert Kern, the offensive coordinator, looking to dial something up. It's an offense that maybe not known to spread the field as much and more running style, maybe out of necessity this year, but Bailey has... Used his legs on a lot of his dropbacks. So third down and four officially. Three by one formation with trips to the far side. Helsel in the backfield standing to Byerly's left. Below two minutes remaining in the first half. Third and four. Play fake. Drops back. Looks. Throws it wide open in the end zone. Falling down and making the catch is Peyton Olsen. They lost him. He was wide open about five yards deep into the end zone. Byerly threw it a little bit high, and Olsen able to come down with the catch. Touchdown, Blue Jays.
A minute 44 remains in the half. And Hugo Hover comes on to attempt the PAT. He's five of six on extra points this year. Good snap, good hold, kick is up, and it is good. Hover knocks through the extra point after the touchdown pass by Byerly. 13 to seven our score. After this, we'll return after this on the Blue Jays Sports Network. Today's typical college student is no longer the recent high school graduate. Almost half of all college students in the United States are age 24 or older. And they have busy lifestyles. They have families, they work part-time jobs or full-time jobs, and they want to earn a college degree. As you can imagine, the traditional college experience just doesn't work for them. Westminster College has a rich history of excellence in cultivating leaders. And now, we can take that experience beyond our campus. We're proud to announce the launch of Westminster Online. It's designed to be flexible and to meet your needs. This program runs in back-to-back -back seven week sessions so you can finish your degree faster. It's 100% online so you can attend class on your schedule. You can choose to major in either business administration, organizational leadership, or in psychology. Westminster Online is affordable, and if you need to pause your studies, because life happens, you can do that. You're able to sit out a session and then come back when you're ready. Check out our website at wcmo.edu to learn more. Ellison, the all-conference kick returner, has just returned the ensuing kickoff after Westminster was able to get down the field and score 95 yards on the return. easy to see that that was going to be the result about two seconds into the kick return. So Ellison comes through with a big kickoff and that Westminster drive that they scored on went 13 plays for 70 yards in six minutes and 45 seconds. So 20 to seven now our score. And Cortez Ramirez boots it away and it they'll let it bounce back into the end zone so Westminster will start at the 25 yard line here comes this offense again once again that previous drive one of their more impressive drives of the year six minutes and 45 seconds off the clock ended in a touchdown to Peyton Olsen in the back of the end zone Byerly came in at quarterback midway through this game right around the turn from the first quarter to the second quarter and has had some success. He'll trot out once again at quarterback, big number 12 from Springfield, Missouri. Three by one formation with trips to the near side for Byerly. Kern in the backfield with him. Ball spotted at the 25 yard line, that's where they will begin the drive. It's a, de a design rollout to the right. Byerly chucks it deep down field. Diving attempt at it is Olsen, but it falls through his hands. Byerly dropped a dime deep down field. Olsen dove for it at the 34 yard line, but it just went through his hands. That was would have been an incredible catch on a really, really good throw. 
but the Blue Jays just can't connect. Those are the kind of plays that you need if you want to beat this really good Minnesota Morris Cougars team who still have a conference title in their sights in the cards for this year, 2-0 and in conference play. So second down and 10 for Byerly. Same formation, trips to the near side. Kern in the backfield standing to his right. Takes the snap, drops back, steps up in the pocket. He's going to run across the 30 and slides down past the 30 at the 31. And coming off the sideline and calling a timeout is Coach Hoffman for Minnesota Morris after the gain of about six. He'll try and save a little bit of time for his offense. So with that, we'll take a quick break right here on the Blue Jays Athletics Network. The way we consume digital media in our world is constantly changing. The way we learn about it needs to change at that same pace. At Westminster College, we're putting you at the forefront of this interdisciplinary research by letting you experience firsthand some of these changes so you'll be better prepared to create it yourself when you leave our campus. In our labs, you'll experience cutting edge technologies that will A minute 14 remaining in the half. Westminster looking to pick up a Minnesota Morris leads Westminster with special teams difficulties here in the second quarter late. And we'll see if they can try and get a spark from their special teams on their kick return here. All the points that have been scored in this game have come in this quarter. Three, four touchdowns for the Cougars. And one on that very impressive drive by Byerly in this offense. McFarland back to return the ensuing kickoff along with Trace Helsel with just under a minute remaining in the half. Kick is away. McFarland stands under it, and he catches it at the seven-yard line. Cuts up field across the 20, across the 25, cuts inside, across the 30, 35, 40, and is brought down from behind. Mikel McFarland, an impressive return, and we'll see if this offense can maybe try and drive down the field and get one of those, some of those points back. 53 seconds to work with for Westminster, only one timeout remaining 
for this offense. Byerly starts under center with Phillips in the backfield, a part of an I formation with Perry split out to the right. Goes into his snap cadence. Takes the snap, give up the middle to Billups, who's hit in the backfield and will be driven backwards for a loss of one. A little dive run concept after the really good return, and Westminster looks like they're willing to take this one to the half. They're going to have to run one more play, it looks like, or it's hard to tell the difference between the game clock and the play clock right now. They are very, very close, but they're lining up to run one more play in the half from the 39-yard line. Far side hash working for Byerly. Three I formation. Takes the snap, gives up the middle to Jordan Kern this time, who powers forward for a gain of about two. And that may end the half. They whistle to stop the clock with about two seconds left. Confusion on the field. There was a flag down. It sits at the 40-yard line. Referee walking over to talk with the Westminster sideline. Having a conversation at the 40-yard line at the number. It's going to be about third and nine for Westminster after the run, pending the penalty and pending whether or not they want to take it to the half. Here's the call. Clock operators, please add three seconds to the clock. And so they'll add three seconds to the clock. They did not announce what the penalty was. It's a face mask against the Cougars. So with three seconds left, they'll put three seconds on the clock for the final play of the half, and it looks like Westminster is just going to try and heave one to the end zone. Kern in the backfield with Byerly. Clock runs, and before the snap, whistles come in. They stop the clock. The clock was going to start on the snap. Excuse me, on the referee's whistle. And wow, they just call the half. Three seconds expired, and that is how the half ends in a bit of confusion with the officiating crew, but a 27-7 lead for the Cougars heading into the break. It was special teams mishaps that ultimately led to the Blue Jays facing this deficit. All the points scored in the second quarter. We'll come back with you for the second half in just a bit on the Blue Jays Broadcast Network. Turn them. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Westminster College Football Senior Day 2023. Today we honor the dedication and careers of seven young men 
Next honoree is Ben Walls from Chicago, Illinois. He's majoring in sports management and business administration. After graduation, he plans to attend graduate school and continue to play football. His favorite Blue Jay memory is being named the All Time Team Club. Next, we have Dawson Brand of Eldon, Missouri. He is the son of Michael, Michael and Tisha Brand. He is a middle school education major with an emphasis in history. After graduation, he plans to begin teaching somewhere in Bend, Missouri, where he will also coach football and wrestling. His favorite Blue Jays memory of all the 6 a.m. practices when I went to the Alps region and all the teammates asked him if he was free. Our next honoree is Eli Shaw of Mesquite Tech. He is the son of Clint and Darwin Shaw. Eli is majoring in sports management. After graduation, he plans on continuing to work at the West Coast here in Clinton and help mentor young young kids. His favorite Blue Jay memory is getting a chance to start his freshman year. Next, we have Marcus Stevens of Clemson, Missouri. He is the son of Bill and Jessica Stevens. Marcus is majoring in physical education. After graduation, he plans to teach PE and coach football. His favorite Blue Jay memory is catching and returning a blocked punt against Iowa West. Our final honoree is cheerleader Kelsey Logan of Clinton, Missouri. She is the daughter of Travis and Mandy Logan. She is majoring in sports management. After graduation, she plans on coaching high school softball and starting a family. Her favorite Blue Jay memory is having a spiritual founder. She has left a huge impact on Kelsey's life as she did in this community. Let's have one more round of applause for all our senior blue jays. States Exercise Tiger Foundation and the Kingdom Pilots Association partnered with us today for our Military Appreciation Day event. Ms. Stephen, Susan Hayes 
the USTF National Director will present the Vice President of Intercollegiate Athletics, Derek Zander, U.S. flags that were flown on the plane pregame. Derek, it's my honor to present to you and the college <laughs> these, these flags that were flown over the field that are pre-game military recognition ceremony. <laughs> Please give both these organizations a round of applause. Also, is the, the National Executive Director of the United States Exercise Tiger Foundation. It is my honor to present to you the distinguishing Team Award for 2023 for Western College Football Team. Thank you, Chief. And this award is the same, the exact same that it is for the Distinguished Athletic Department Award for 2023. And to accompany the to present our first Oscar Mike Game Day trophy to be placed here on the campus. Derek, it's my honor.
We welcome you back to Westminster football. Getting you set for the second half of this one, a 27 to 7. Had four carries for 17 yards and a touchdown himself. <coughs> Westminster's got it teed up, and we are just about set once again. Garrett Ellison back to return for the Cougars, along with Jacob Miranda. And we are underway, a line drive kick that's going to be fielded by the up man. He cuts it upfield to the 30, still fighting forward, and... It will be brought down at the 31. It was Carter Watness, the backup tight end, the up man, who returned it. So pretty average starting field position here for the Cougars. First half stats, seven first downs for Minnesota Morris, only six for the Blue Jays. 24 total plays for Minnesota Morris to 38 for Westminster. They really took their time offensively in that first half. Reeb back out to work. He gives up the middle and immediately hit in the backfield at the 30-yard line is Blake Johnson, I believe. They're running back to start the second half, his fifth carry.
back to another receiver crossing the format where they then flipped it back to Reed who fired a bullet down the field and Naughton who is slow to get up. And with that, Naughton slowly getting to his feet. We'll take a quick break right here on the Westminster Blue Jays Network. Financial planning is one of those careers that rewards you with your own professional accomplishment as well as a deep mental satisfaction from helping your clients directly. For example, as a financial planning professional, you'll help your clients in developing such personal financial plans as estate planning and retirement planning. Our curriculum also aligns well with the CFP board's learning outcomes. And we welcome. Welcome back to Westminster football. Naughton was able to walk off the field, and now the Cougars offense back out to work. The give is to Johnson up the middle, who's swarmed by the D-line of Westminster. And amongst them was Marcus Stevens, who tackled him down. Either no gain or very little gain. Second down and goal from the three-yard. Cougars have been really efficient offensively today. Second and goal, takes the shotgun snap. It's a play fake, immediately hit as he throws and it's intercepted on the left sideline. Running it out of the end zone is the interceptor. That was Keegan Vaughn able to high point the football that was flipped up out of necessity by Reeb, who is getting just leveled as he threw. And with that, Westminster gets a turnover. He fielded it, he caught it in the end zone, tried to start running back, came out of the end zone, and then was tackled at the two yard line. So that's where Westminster will start. You might want to have seen him try and get down and take a knee and take the touchback, but if he was able to get back, a, get past a couple of, def, couple of offensive players turned defenders, he might have been able to have some open field and get Westminster in. Really good field position, if not better. But there's the defensive spark that we talked about in that first half. Back out to work is Peyton Byerly. Under center, sneaks it up the middle and gets out of his shadow of his own end zone. Excuse me. It's Brandon Perry back into the game at quarterback. So he started the first quarter. And then into the second quarter, Byerly took over for him. Perry shifted out to wide receiver and now he's Back under center at quarterback. He gets it out to the five-yard line, a gain of three on a quarterback sneak. He'll take that any day of the week. And now confusion with substitutions for the Blue Jays. As finally he comes running out. Under 12 and a half minutes remaining in the third quarter. Just underway in the second half. It's been a bit eventful already. Perry in the shotgun, claps his hands. He Design pitch out to the right. Kern is immediately hit and stacked up behind the line of scrimmage at the four yard line. A bit of a speed option to the right side where Perry was immediately swarmed by defenders, got it out to Kern to try and hit the corner, but he was hit as well. So a loss of maybe a half a yard, third down in about seven from the four yard line. More substitutions coming in for the Blue Jays with 20 seconds on the play clock. This ball spotted at the near side hash. Trey King, the lone receiver to the right with three to the left. The right is the short side of the field. Perry drops back on a three step drop, fires over the middle, it's caught. And falling forward is Elijah Teal after running a curl route. He got to the 10 yard line, they're about maybe two yards shy of the first down marker and here comes the punting unit. Teal just running a, about a six yard curl route and Perry able to fire it into him. That gives their punting unit a little bit of room. And back to return once again is Garrett Ellison. Dawson Brandt on to punt. He's been pretty good today. He's down a couple deep into their own territory. Ellison's going to have a shot at it. No, he lets it bounce, and it bounces deep into Cougars' territory. He picks it out about the 45-yard line, 35-yard line. 
has to retreat back because his momentum was carrying him backwards and he's swarmed by Westminster Blue Jays at around the 34 yard line. So that is where the Cougars will start and Dawson Brandt has had a very solid day punting the football. You would like to see him out there less though. So Minnesota Morris back out to work offensively. Reeb starts in the shotgun, three by one formation, trips to the near side, ball spotted on the right hash. Claps his hands, pitches it outside to Boss who has a little bit of space but he is a hit in the backfield and driven backwards at the 34 yard line. Exploding into the backfield was Keegan Vaughn again making another nice play. So second down and 10 as forward progress got him back to the line of scrimmage. From the shotgun, Reeb again. 12 of 18 last week and has been really good this week as well. Takes the snap, throws a screen pass out to the right. Naughton catches it and is hit hard and driven out of bounds at the 32 yard line. And a very nice play by Connor Vaughn. Vaughn went exploding. He was not fooled by the screen play. He immediately broke on the route by Naughton, just taking a step back. And Vaughn was able to get to the sideline and knock him out of bounds. So third down and 12 officially, with time ticking down below nine and a half minutes left. 27 to seven, our score from their own 32 yard line. Minnesota Morris works, Reeb takes the snap, three step drop, fires over the middle, it's caught, first down. Tang ran a in route and caught it at the 45 and got the first down for the Cougars. Clock continues to run. Ethan Tang has been such a great player for this Cougars team. Three receptions for 35 yards last week. He's the team leading receiver with 344 yards and a touchdown on the year. First and 10 Cougars. Reeb takes the snap, give up the middle to Boss who navigates his way through a lot of traffic and barely gets back to the line of scrimmage. He got one yard and they continue to really take their time. Both offenses have not been too urgent in getting back up to the line of scrimmage. As Naughton will check into the game for tight end Cole Mitchell, so an extra receiver in the game for Minnesota Morris. Ball spotted just to the left of the far hash. Reeb in the shotgun. Play fake to Boss and he's immediately hit and driven down. Darvin Fowler. Read that play perfectly and wrapped him up in the backfield. Reeb had no shot of getting out of it and it's a sack to set up third down and long. Second sack of the day for Fowler. This defense trying to get off the field. So third down and 16 officially. Ball spotted in between the hashes, three by one formation to the near, with trips to the near side. Reeb takes the snap at the belt. He throws over the middle and it kind of lands in no man's land. He might have been looking for Watness running a go route up the seam, but it just fell in between about three receivers and that is a great defensive stand by this Blue Jays team that continues to really play well today. So back out to punt for the Cougars is Cortez Ramirez. And Sam Owen and Elijah Teal back to return. Good snap, kick is up, a high spiraling kick that's called for a fair catch twice and it knocks off of somebody. Couldn't tell if that was a Blue Jay that it hit, but they're able to fall on it at their own 26 yard line. 
So that is where the offense will take over. Second drive of the second half for them. And presumably it's still Brandon Perry at quarterback. He checked out of the game in that first half and then into the second half, but instead it's Peyton Byerly into the game at quarterback. It's a four wide receiver set, trips to the far side. Byerly takes the snap, has to jump a little bit for it, gives up the middle to Billups, who crashes forward for a gain of two. So second and eight coming up for the Blue Jays, trying to get that run game going a little bit more. When we've seen them have success this year, it has been mostly with that running game. Billups averaging nearly five yards a carry on the season. Second and eight for the Blue Jays. Byerly from the shotgun with Billups to his left. Takes the snap, gives up the middle to Billups, who's irritated in the backfield, gets back to the line of scrimmage, maybe gets a yard, and is swarmed and is brought down. So third down and seven to go for the Blue Jays as the Cougars making substitutions, bringing in an extra defensive back on third and long. Byerly works from the shotgun. Still a three by one formation with trips to the left side. 27 to seven, our score. Enters his motion, a blitz comes, takes the snap, drops back, tries to escape left and is flung down in the backfield. He was immediately pressured and brought down by the Cougars. And it was Dylan Young on the sack who got into the backfield. So fourth down for Westminster as coming back out to punt is Brant and immediately flags fly in before they can enter the cadence. And it's a procedural penalty, a false start against Westminster. There hasn't been a lot of laundry on the field today, but Westminster driven backwards there. Back to return is Ellison. Three penalties for 33 yards for Minnesota Morris, and that was the third penalty of the game for Westminster. High spiraling kick called for a fair catch at the 47-yard line by Ellison, who fields it cleanly and is down there, so here comes the Cougars offense once again. Below five minutes remaining in this second half. This Morris offense has been really, really good this year. Second in the UMAC in terms of rushing yards. They're really good on third down as well, ranking first in the conference for that. And they go for it on fourth down. They're aggressive in their play calling. They're five for 12 on fourth down conversions. Give up the middle is to Johnson, who falls forward across the 50-yard line. And once again, Minnesota Morris is into Westminster territory at the 49-yard line. So they'll line up right on that Blue Jay logo at midfield. Beautiful fall day here in mid-Missouri. The tree's starting to get that brownish, yellowish color. Leaves start to fall off. Reeb works from the shotgun. Johnson stands to his right. Takes the belt high snap. Give is a, to Johnson, who's immediately hit in the backfield, swarmed, and bounces off a couple of tackles and goes down around the line of scrimmage. He did get back, so no gain. Third and seven, Devin Miller got into the backfield to initially hit him, but wasn't able to finish the tackle that would have driven them back maybe two or three yards. So it's third down and seven nonetheless. Under four minutes remain in the second, the third quarter. 
Reeb from the shotgun, two receivers left, one to the right. He drops back into a three-step drop, pump fakes, rolls to the right, escapes. 50, 45, bounces it outside towards the sideline, past the 40, and is knocked out of bounds at the 37-yard line, and he scrambles for a first down. Reeb has done a great job getting outside the pocket today when he has to. He doesn't do it a lot, but he has some wheels. He's not known to beat defenses with his legs, but has the ability to when he can. Much more of a pocket-style passer. And he likes working in the middle of the field. They break the huddle into a shotgun formation. Two receivers left, one to the right. 27-7, to seven, Minnesota Morris leads. Reeb takes the shotgun snap, give up the middle to Johnson, who is pushing a big pile of humanity to the 36-yard line. Under three minutes remain in the third quarter. Second down and eight to go for Minnesota Morris. Reeb walks towards that sideline, getting his play call from his coaches. 24 seconds to snap the football. He does that on pretty much every play, just walking towards his coordinators, making sure he does get the right one. Three by one formation, trips to the left side of the formation. Reeb in the shotgun, drops back into a three-step drop, looks left, throws it deep down the near sideline. It's a wobbler that falls harmlessly to the ground. He was looking for Sam Jordan and nearly coming over and intercepting that ball was Connor Vaughn, who made a diving attempt but couldn't quite get there. So third down and eight to go for Minnesota Morris. Reeb breaks the huddle. Starts in the shotgun. Two receivers left, one to the right. Ball spotted in between the hashes at the 36-yard line. Takes the snap, give up the middle to Johnson, who gets past the first wave of defenders and gets across the 25 into the 20-yard line where he's brought down there. Johnson able to dodge the blitz of Westminster, who brought a lot of defenders up that middle and he was able to bounce it to the left side, get past everybody and into the second level where there weren't a lot of tacklers available. So the Cougars into the red zone. They are 20 of 26 on scoring opportunities entering today. That's third in conference. Reeb takes the snap, drops back, looks, fires deep to the right corner of the end zone, jump ball, and it's incomplete. Oh, great coverage by Vaughn. On the right side of the formation, he was looking for Ethan Tang. He's not a bad guy to throw a jump ball to. He's 6'5", 225 pounds. This receiving core has a ton of height. Naughton stands at 6'5", as well. Only 200 pounds, though. So these are legitimately tight end size players playing on the outside at wide receiver. Very tough for corners to stay with them. Second and 10 from the 20-yard line. Reeb in the shotgun with Johnson to his left. It's a pitch play outside to Johnson. 20, gets back to the line of scrimmage, cuts it upfield at the 20, at the 15, and is knocked out of bounds at the 14. Dylan Farrell came over to knock him out of bounds, and that's a gain of about six, setting up third down for Westminster. The clock is about a minute and a half left in the third quarter. 27 to seven, our score. Minnesota Morse looking to add upon that. Reeb in the shotgun. Two by two is the formation. Two receivers left, two to the right. Ball spotted at the near hash. Takes the snap. It's the same play. A pitch play to Johnson on the outside. Gets to the 10. Gets inside the 10 where he's cut down out of bounds at around the five or the four yard line for the first down. And that sets up first and goal. They called the same play to Johnson.
Welcome back to Westminster football. They'll start at their own third line. Moving from right to left on your radio dial. Start of the fourth quarter. They trail 34 to 7. And still in the game is Peyton Byerly at quarterback. He claps his hands, takes a high snap. Drops back, now steps up in the pocket, running along the line of scrimmage to his right, looking, looking, throws high, and throws it away into the Westminster bench. Byerly with a good decision to just get rid of that football. He extended the play long enough to maybe give his receiver a bit of a chance to get open downfield, but it ended up not being coming out of anything. As of course, Brandon Perry started this game at quarterback. He played the first quarter, then handed it off to Byerly in the second quarter. And then Perry started the first drive of the third quarter, and then Byerly came back in after that drive. So he stands in the shotgun, three by one formation with trips to the far side. Byerly takes the snap at the numbers, drops back, now steps up, looks to run, 35, spun down across the 40. And he is at the, excuse me, the 39-yard line. So good run from Byerly to cut the down and distance down. You still feel like Westminster has not had enough success on first down in this football game. Really struggled. Hessel checks into the game at running back. Looks like it's going to be another three-by-one formation. The lone receiver to the left is Trey King. He has a catch on the day, but he is being covered by Garrett Ellison. A great corner. Minnesota Moore showing blitz, but they back off. The, it's a screen pass outside to Hessel, who dives forward across the 40 to the 41 or two-yard line-ish. And that cuts the distance about in half on third and four, becomes a fourth and two. And the offense looks like they are adamant in staying out there. Below 14 minutes remain in the, thir in the fourth quarter of this one. The Cougars have just dominated this one. Not quite as much as last week in that 45 to nothing blowout. Westminster has done a good job, a better job on both sides of the ball at staying in it as he takes the shotgun snap but immediately whistles pour down on the field of play and Westminster will take a timeout. So a 13-13 left in the final quarter of this one. 34-7 game. We'll take a break on the Westminster Blue Jays Network. Museum Studies at Westminster is a program where students create and curate exhibitions, design programs, ask challenging questions, and above all, blend history, heritage, and culture in a way that informs and inspires. We invite you to join us at Westminster and be a part of history in a way that not only preserves the past, but through the power of museums, helps to build a better future. Welcome back to Westminster football as a fourth down and one upcoming for this Blue Jays offense. Byerly in the game at quarterback. He stands in the pistol with Hessel in the backfield. Fourth and one. Sends a man in motion from left to right and they got him to jump. Oh man. They got him to jump and then the left guard Noah Tepe just smacked the, the guilty party who jumped over the line of scrimmage. That's, that's one way to get the neutral zone infraction as the flag came in. The referees are huddling together perhaps to discuss who moved first. And it will be officially encroachment, giving Westminster a first down. I'm not sure if that officially was encroachment. 
because I don't know if they willingly made contact with an offensive player. The offensive smacked him upside the head. First and 10 for the Blue Jays. Split pistol formation. Claps his hands and it's a high snap that goes over his head. Byerly able to jump on it and he recovers it for a loss of about seven or eight. And Westminster driven backwards again. Helsel the running back in the game. Twelve twenty-two remaining in the final quarter of this one as time continues to wind down on what looks like to be the Cougars' fourth win of the year. They lead 34-7. to Byerly claps his hands, takes the belt high snap, drops back, now steps up. He's going to run it again, points out a block, cross the 40, and gets a couple of those yards back, setting up third down and long still, but it's not third and 21 like it was on that previous play. Byerly really likes that lane up the middle to run through. Every feels like every drop back he has, he's stepping up in that pocket, climbing the ladder, and considering, at least considering running the football. He did on that last play. So third down and 14 officially. Ball spotted in between the hashes. Three by one formation, trips to the near side. Kern in the game. Assumably to block, excuse me, that's Dante Billups in the game. Play fake, drops back, seven step drop. He drops it off to Billups who has a lot of room across the 45, across the 50, knocked out of bounds and he is close to a first down. He was knocked out officially at the 45 yard line on the right sideline and he's about two yards shy. It's hard to tell, especially because Westminster was behind the sticks there where that first down marker was. So it's fourth down and two officially. 11 minutes left <laughs> in this fourth quarter. It was controversial whether or not he was out of bounds by the time he crossed that first down marker, but nonetheless, it's fourth and two. Westminster looks to stay on the field. Billups the, in the backfield in a pistol formation. Speed option out to the left. Byerly's going to keep it, and he only gets about one yard. The Cougars hold again. A fourth down failed conversion for Westminster, and that's about the story of the game for them. It looked a bit promising as they ran a speed option to the left side where they had a lot of room to work with. Byerly decided to keep it himself because Minnesota Morris, give them credit, their defense played it perfectly. They stayed keyed in on Billups, who was the option man, and they forced Byerly to keep it, and he did not quite have enough power to get back to the line of scrimmage. And now it's a, looks like a, could be a quarterback change here for Minnesota Morris. Klimek, the quarterback, a Triple option as he pitches it outside and down the sideline, 45-40, flag flies, 30, and is finally caught from behind at the 25-yard line, now pushing and shoving down the near side, and more flags fly. So the second string is in for Minnesota Morris, and on the carry was Kyler Klitzo. So it must be, it, it was in the area of holding or something. The flag is at the 42 yard line. That was the flag that was thrown during the play. And then there's another flag all the way down at around the 20 yard line where he was hit out of bounds. Third penalty, offset. Sack 
So the penalty's offset. It was on sportsmanlike conduct at the end of the play. The big play is canceled out. Kyler Klitzo, the ball carrier there, who got the pitch option from Ethan Klimek, the new quarterback into the game. He's 7 for 11 throwing on the year so far for 84 yards, a touchdown, and two interceptions. Wearing number 18, the freshman from Nevis, Minnesota. He got into the game last week, had one completion for 24 yards. So the new quarterback and new look offense for Morris. A lot more younger players. We'll see what they can do. Klimek comes out in the shotgun, running back to his right. Waiting the snap, the give up the middle is to him, across the 50, across the 45, now bounces it outside, trying to get outside again, across the first down marker, and is brought down at about the 44 yard line. Number 23, Christian Flores on the carry, another freshman into the game. Not a, not a, Huge guy at 5'9", 185, but certainly has a lot of explosiveness. Klimek in the shotgun, three by one formation, trips to the right side, which is also the field side. Give up the middle, cutting it back inside across the 40, into deep into Jay's territory. Now pushing a pile forward to about the 35 yard line. The carry was Flores again, and he's about a yard shy of a first down. Flores. Getting a healthy dose of action. Manny Guy checks into the game at wide receiver. And the shotgun once again for Klimek. Flores in the backfield who gets the carry off, tackle to the right, bounces it outside to the 35 and is tripped up from behind. Very nice pursuit from the Blue Jays defense. And that'll bring up third down in about one. Substitutions coming in for the Blue Jays. Devin Miller checks out. And now a couple of tight ends check in for Minnesota Morris. Flores in the backfield, standing to Climax left on a third down and one. Takes the belt high snap, give outside. Flores nearly got hit in the backfield, but is able to work his way to about the line to gain, and I think they'll give it to him. First down, Cougars. So another first down and another third down conversion for Minnesota Morris. There are five of 11 so far today. They've really turned it around in the second half on those third downs. So first and 10, ball at the 34 yard line, spotted at the near side hash. Flores still in the game, standing to climax right, takes the shotgun snap, pitches it outside to Flores, cuts it back inside, Nearly gets to the 30-yard line to about the 31. And it's a gain of about three. So second down. Seeing all these young players for Minnesota Morris into the game, seeing what their future's like. All right. UMAC threat to win the conference this year, but going forward, they look to have a bright future as well. Second down and seven. Clock ticks below seven minutes left in the fourth quarter. Klimek takes the shotgun snap. It's a screen out to the right. Across the 30, across the 25, still fighting forward to the 23-yard line. Nice pitch and catch there on the outside to Manny Guy, the wide receiver. Manny Guy checking into the game as a freshman at 5'11". 5'11", 165 pounds from Austin, Minnesota. And part of this big Cougars line change. 
here late into the fourth quarter of a 34-7 blowout. Klimek on a read option, keeps it himself, breaks a tackle across the 20, across the 15, into the 10-yard line, stumbles forward to the 9. Klimek with a very nice run to keep it himself and fall forward and fight for extra yards. Ethan Klimek, very impressive from him. So first and goal now for Minnesota Morris. As six minutes remain in the football game. Klimek comes out in the shotgun. O'Rourke stands to his right, now newly into the game. It's a fumbled snap, and Klimek just able to get back on it. It looks like they were running a bit of a speed option to the right with Blake Schmidt. O'Rourke was serving as a bit of a decoy on that play with two new running backs, Schmidt and O'Rourke, checking into the game there. Got to really have the roster ready here as they continue to go deeper and deeper into their depth chart. Dylan Schaefer, now the wide receiver, split far out to the left. And in the shotgun is Kleiman. He drops back. He hits Schaefer on the outside on a screen pass, and he's immediately hit and slung down. He lost about a yard or two on second and 14 and second and goal from the 14. That will bring up third and goal. So third and goal from the 14. Third and, thir third and 13 actually officially. They break the huddle. Klimek in the shotgun. Samuel O'Rourke back into the game, standing to his right. He drops back, looks, clean pocket, throws to the right corner, and it is intercepted. Intercepted on the right side and hustling down the sideline is Connor Vaughn. He's got one man to beat. He's at the 40, 35, 30, cuts it back inside. 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Blue Jays. Connor Vaughn. Picked it off right in front of the right pylon of Minnesota Morris, who are looking to score yet another touchdown. He jumped the route and was able to scamper down the sideline before cutting it back inside, beating another defender, and scoring the second touchdown of the game for Westminster. So 34-13 to now, the score, and it looks like the offense will come out and try and run a two-point conversion. It's a mad scramble for the Cougars to get their correct personnel onto the field. And they finally do their set I formation with Hessel the running back. They give up the middle to Hessel, or excuse me, Kern. He powers forward, the pile is trying to be pushed, and he is close to the goal line, and he's short. So, the two-point conversion is no good. But Connor Vaughn electrifies Miller Stadium one last time or one time today. 34-13 now our score as Westminster gets a positive coming out of this one. And the defense overall, yes, they have allowed quite a bit of points, but a lot of those have been off of poor field position setting up. So with 14, 4.14 remaining in this one, we'll take a quick break right here on the Blue Jays Broadcast Network. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this world while finding a rewarding career Onside kick, here we go. Hover has it teed up and it looks like Westminster is going to try and get an onside kick. 4-14 Four, remains in the final quarter of this one but before he can go up and kick it, a timeout taken by the Blue Jays. Must have not liked the look there. And they will head back to the sidelines, Minnesota Morris leading 34 to 13. 
Morris, Minnesota, founded in 1871, home of the largest dairy milking operations, one of the largest dairy milking operations in the United States, and shifting to University of Min Minnesota, Morris, it's one of five campuses for the University of Minnesota system. You know, you might think of the University of Minnesota as the Golden Gophers, and they are one of those campuses associated with it. Some of their famous alumni is Sarah McCann, a USA silver medalist wrestler in 2004 at the Olympics and is currently competing in the UFC women's bantamweight division. Staying with the wrestling theme, Eric Rowan, a, a man that competes, competes in WWE, is also an alumni of the University of Minnesota Morris. Hover has it teed up for an onside kick. He gets it away, a high bounce, and it's fielded at the 45-yard line by the hands team. Very nice job by them to field it. And so that will bring out the Cougars' offense once again. But Eric Rowan, also that wrestler, he also played football for Minnesota Morris. Tall guy, strong guy, makes sense. So here comes the Cougars offense again. From the shotgun, Klimek, and oh my goodness, just a disaster procedure there. It, somebody didn't know what to do. It looks like everybody jumped offside except for the center. It looks like the center was the only one that didn't know the snap count. It's officially on Andrew Purcell, the right tackle, but the false start was pretty much everybody. Everybody moved and started the play, and the center must have forgot the snap count. So 4-12 remains now in the fourth quarter. Two receivers left, one to the right. The give up the middle, and he falls forward to the 45-yard line. That was running back Ben Schmidt, Blake Schmidt, running up the middle. The freshman at 5'9", 170. University of Minnesota Morris used to go by UMM, but I'm told that the university is trying to move away a bit from the UMM designation. Klimek in the shotgun again, trips to the near side, give up the middle, and immediately hit in the backfield. Devin Miller came across the formation to tackle him from behind. And on the play, uh, it was Tay Miles, another freshman running back for Minnesota Morris. They've really rotated in and out the freshman running backs. Now Blake Schmidt checks in the game for Miles. Third down and 12 to go from their own 46-yard line. Shotgun formation again. Tight end lined up to the left of the formation. Two receivers right, one left. The give, nope. Yep, the give up the middle is to Blake Schmidt, who's stood up at the line of scrimmage for about a gain of one. And it'll bring up fourth and about 11. And the offense is not moving right now. And finally, the punting unit will jog onto the field. Two and a half minutes remain as the time continues to run down 34 to 13 the score. Doing the punting again is Cortez Ramirez. And looks like Teal checks into the game as one of the returners along with McFarlane. Low snap, but he fields it. A flag flies pre-snap. The kick is away. It bounces at the five. It bounces inside the five. It's picked up in the end zone by Teal, who bounces it outside. Teal across the 20, trying to hit the corner. 30, 40, 35, and is spun down at the 39-yard line. Elijah Teal with a good return after really wondering where that was. 
We were wondering why he would pick it up off the one yard line. Well, that was why. He had a ton of room to work with. But now we have to check on the flag that flew right as the ball was snapped. A minute 50 officially remains in this one. And it looks like the penalty could be against Westminster. And this might have them redo the punt. Minnesota Morris getting some players back out onto the field. Still no official call. Again, a minute 50 remains. So it's against Westminster. They were lined up in the neutral zone. A five-yard penalty. So the Cougars are going to send their offense back out onto the field. Westminster has their punting unit, their punt return unit on the field. But Klimek is on the field, their quarterback. And Westminster only has 10 men on the field. As Elijah Teal jogs off the field, so now they only have nine players on the field, and Westminster will use a timeout still with a minute 50 left. We're going to send it to a quick break right here on the Blue Jays Sports Network. Museums allow us to celebrate humanity's soaring achievements while also providing lessons on how to avoid the mistakes of our past. They can also amplify the voices of underrepresented groups while bringing economic uplift to communities. We invite you to explore this. Well, welcome back to Westminster football and now, after all of that, Minnesota Morris has their punting unit back onto the field. 34-13 to with Westminster as they don't have a return man. Punt is away. An end-over-end kick that bounces at the six-yard line. Takes a hop and then trickles into the end zone for a touchback. As Anthony Dickerson, the had been in the game he ran back to return the kick so Westminster takes over at in their own territory at the 20 yard line took nine seconds off the clock a minute 41 remains part of Westminster's sixth loss of the season and now Westminster puts in their own different subs formation as Still in the game is Peyton Byerly. Takes the snap from under center. Give up the middle and fighting forward to the 22-yard line. Gain of about two. Landon Yardley on the carry up the middle. And... That sets up second down and eight. Minute 13 remains in this one. Westminster taking their time to get up to the line of scrimmage. They'll need to snap it two more times to run this clock out. Yardley still in the game. I formation for Byerly in this offense. A receiver to the right and a receiver to the left. The give up the middle is to Yardley, probing for space and won't find any as he falls forward for a gain of one. And Westminster's, this will be Westminster's sixth loss of the year after a very promising win against Martin Luther two weeks ago. A 28 to 14 victory. Came back and traveled to Morris, Minnesota where they lost 45 to nothing last week. Next week they'll host Greenville. That's a one o'clock kickoff. You can hear that right here on the Blue Jays Sports Network. 
as 15 seconds remain in this one. Firely comes out in the shotgun this time, excuse me, the pistol, split pistol formation. And the give up the middle and fighting for room is McFarland who falls forward to the 24 yard line and time has expired in this one. The sixth loss of Westminster's year is a 34 to 13 loss to the Minnesota Morris Cougars. They move to four and three on the year and next week they will have crown at home. That one is again scheduled for one o'clock. Thank you so much for joining us on Westminster Blue Jays football. Have a very good, safe afternoon, and thank you so much for joining me. For Tyler Overlag, my producer, I'm Mickey Doolittle, saying so long from Miller Stadium. Once again, final score, 34-13. We'll see you next week on Blue Jays Sports Network.